Evil Dead fans, last night I finally watched Evil Dead Rise. I'm going to go over it. I just woke up, have my cup of coffee in my Army of Dark Chocolate coffee cup. You can get from Bones Coffee online. Check them out. This is a cool cup. And in this video, I am going to go over spoilers and what I thought about it. Different things of the film that I noticed, some Easter eggs, things like that. Now, if you don't want to hear any spoilers, I suggest to come back to this after you watch it. So in this movie, the book is not called the Necronomicon. It's called the Naturum de Manto, same as the original Evil Dead. It was never called the Necronomicon Evil Dead 1. It isn't called that in this movie, which I think is cool. Uh, and right off the bat in this movie, they have the fly buzzing sound that you hear at the beginning of the original Evil Dead, which I thought was awesome. Uh, they have part of the soundtrack, a song from the soundtrack from Evil Dead 1 that is mixed in with the different sounds, uh, mainly leading towards when all the creepiness starts. You can, If you really listen, you can hear it. There's a lot of aspects of Evil Dead 2. They say Dead by Dawn in there. I thought that was cool. I like the fact that there was some subtle comedic aspects in it. Like when I was watching it and the scissor scene came up where uh, I'm just going to call the mom the mom and then the sister the sister. And I'll get to that in a minute why I'm going to call them that. Uh, when the mom got the scissor in the face, when she got the scissor in the face and she just kind of lumped over like this. I thought that was hilarious. I actually laughed in the theater uh, when she's in the tub and she's on the ceiling and does that scream very similar to 2013 and just flops in the tub. Loved it. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but was the movie creepy? As an Evil Dead fan expecting it? No. It wasn't creepy because I, as an Evil Dead fan, you kind of go into it knowing what to expect. If you're going into it not knowing Evil Dead, you'll be creeped out. And you'll that, that factor will come into play with how you feel about it. And you may think this is the greatest movie of all time or the best Evil Dead, and it may get you in the other Evil Deads. And it is, I would say, well worthy of being called an Evil Dead movie. Now let's talk about some of the other Easter eggs in this movie. Of course, you have the clock. The clock is there. Um, at the beginning, they have the POV shots. Now, that is one problem that I had with the movie is the POV four shots. Those were terrible. Uh, off the bat, they have one right, off, right at the beginning of the movie. And it, you can get away with that because it was supposed to be a drone. And it, with being a drone, you can get away with it. But the other POV shots, what made the POV shots of the force, you know, the evil force going after somebody so good, is if you remember from the original Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, it was kind of a buildup where it would kind of raise up and then slowly and then it would speed up. And this movie is just fast. And there's no lead up with it. The music in Evil Dead 1 Evil Dead 2 really helped that evil force to be more creepy. And this movie, it didn't do that. It was just very fast, and there it was. So the POV shots to me kind of sucked. Let's talk about some of the characters and what I think about them. Uh, let's talk about the names of the kids you had. Bridget. Uh, Bridget was my favorite deadite. And Bridget was named after Bridget Fonda, who was who played Linda at the beginning of the recap in Army of Darkness. Uh, Bridget Fonda is an actress who just wanted to be a part of the Evil Dead trilogy. And once she heard they were making Army of Darkness, she got the role of Linda. Also, on the truck at the end that had the, uh, the uh, freaking um, wood chipper, uh, the truck had the name Fonda on it. Another throwback to Bridget Fonda, I'm sure. You also had Cassie, the youngest daughter, named after Cassie Wesley, who played Bobby Joe. Then you had Danny, who was named after Danny Hicks, who played Jake in Evil Dead 2, which I thought was cool. Now, the reason why I'm saying the mom and the sister, you know, is because they, the, I just don't think the characters were very memorable. Them be, not being very memorable, they just seem, it just... You know, you have different characters from the different movies who are more memorable, like Ash is always very memorable. They're very important to the story, just not memorable. Of course, if you've seen it, you know the sister was pregnant. I'm glad they didn't embellish on that too much in the story because that kind of would have dumbed things down where she's constantly like, 
you know, she was only like, just newly found out she was pregnant. Uh, I'm just glad she wasn't limping around the whole time, you know, with pregnancy pains and things. So I'm glad that wasn't embellished too much in it. Now let's talk about the Book of the Dead that's in there, the Naturum de Monto. Now, this isn't the same one that Ash has, which I thought was cool. I was worried about that. The story goes is the apartment building they live in, there used to be a bank underneath it, and uh, Danny goes down there after this earthquake. He finds the book, and also the, when he finds the book and he takes it out of, like, the burlap, and what's cool, when he finds in the burlap, the form of it is kind of the side view of the term Damanto from Evil Dead 1, uh, when you see the side face look of it when it's on the ground, when Ash is trying to throw it into the fireplace. But it's in like a burlap sack, and when he lifts open the burlap sack, all these beetles fly out. And that is very true to form with beetles, because beetles like to eat old flesh, bone, marrow, stuff like that. So a lot of people who do taxidermy do like deer heads and stuff. What they'll do is they'll beetle it where they put it in the thing with beetles and the beetles eat it up. And trust me, when I'm working on daggers in the summertime with real bone and stuff, beetles will just show up all over the place in my shop and I got to get rid of them. It drives me nuts. So the beetle effect, very true to form. It's rotting flesh. It's human flesh um, and inked in human blood. So that was a very good effect. So anyways, he finds this. Uh, Danny finds the book. He finds these uh, two records. The first record is a bunch of priests uh, talking about the book. That's where here Bruce Campbell. He's like, that's why it's called the Book of the Dead. Um, basically, a priest found it, and these other priests are like, don't mess with it. It's evil. And then the second recording on the second uh, record, he plays it and does the incantation. So it's very cool. It's not related to Raymond Noby, because that was my concern. Because once you stick it in that realm, then all of a sudden... It's back to that same book. But what's cool is they talked about three different books. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's because Army of Darkness had three different books. Wrong. What they mean by three different books, they mean that book and that film. They mean the one that Ash has through his trilogy in 2013. So there's those three books. So Lee really tried to connect all three together. So I thought that was very cool. Uh, given each book from each part of the movies its place in a timeline. So, good job, Lee. I thought that was phenomenal work on giving that specific book a backstory. Now, of course, you know, it doesn't have a face. It has teeth. And I was talking to a friend of mine once we saw the book. I'm like, I guarantee they're going to try to open it. And he's, he's gonna, somebody's going to prick their finger and it's going to land on the book and bleed on it. That's what happened. So, you, you know, Danny pricks his finger, blood lands on the book, the teeth open up, and the book opens up. What else is cool about that book is it would flip to different sections of the book. So, what was going on in that book was specifically to a different section. Uh, the demon who possessed the mom, also the same demon at the end of the movie. Uh, just to let you know, the beginning scene of the movie is like, a day after of what happens in the main story, and then it cuts to the end of how it happened at the beginning of the movie, what it leads to. So it flips to different things. So you have that main demon. It shows the abomination at the end, kind of that whole kind of thing. It's it very similar to 2013 in a way where it shows the different kind of demons or different things that can happen, like the hot shower deal, in 2013, you know, it showed different demons. So, very similar. What I like about this book, too, especially versus the 2013, is the fact it wasn't to where it's like, needs to possess six people and then the abomination can come out. No, it was basically just that there was that recording like Raymond Noby's where it's what's what happened afterwards. And the, basically the priest is like, there's nothing you can do. We don't know how to put the genie back in the bottle. All you can do is run. So that is also a good thing that a lot of people probably didn't catch on to is we're going to cut to the end. So the girl at the beginning of the movie who was possessed was in the same building as what happened in the main story. And then she went to this cabin. 
So with that priest saying you have to run, it seems that the demon or deadite has to take possession of somebody to be able to go somewhere else. So they're basically, when they're at least in one spot, that's where they're at. So they have to take host of somebody to go somewhere else to spread. Because when you really think about it, if you just say the spell or the incantation or you play it, it should just go everywhere. But no, it's like stuck in one setting, which makes sense for all the Evil Dead movies. And to this movie, it was a good explanation. So if you didn't catch that, that's why. So I thought that was pretty cool. Let's talk a little bit about the Deadites, the Demons. Now, the mom, she had very much like kind of like a snake cat eye kind of thing going on. Not something you really have seen yet. So that was pretty original. Um, my favorite Deadite, Bridget. Loved her role. She had the 2013 eyes that you see at the beginning of 2013. You know, the girl who was like strapped to the uh, post in the basement. They torched on fire and her, her dad blew her head off. The same eyes as her, so they had 2013. And then when Danny got possessed, he got the white eyes. So they had one from Ashes Trilogy, one from 2013, and one original to this film. So I thought that was neat. Very, very cool. I really wish, though, like, Bridget's Deadite scene was way more intense and way longer than really any other except for the mom. I really wish they would have gave her the white eyes instead because it had, like, Danny's eyes were, like, super foggy and white and they looked great. And, and But you, he was barely a Deadite during the whole thing, mostly towards the end. So I wish they would have done that with her because when she was, like, when Bridget was walking around as a Deadite, like, and you would just see her face, it wasn't as creepy um, as it would have been if they would have been white eyes, I, I thought. But her, like, when they find her as a deadite and she's, like, chewing on the glass and she's, like, basically, like, standing on the counter looking away from everybody, just kind of looking up like this, that was cool. She was my favorite. Now, let's talk about Staffney. So, <laughs> we have in... The original trilogy, you have well, Ash trilogy, you have the Kandarian dagger. In this movie, you have Staphne. Basically, it's a stick or like a mop. Yeah, it's a it's a mop handle. Sorry, it's a mop handle um, with like you know a hair scrunchie and a baby head, and then like a necklace like glued to the top of her head. And you know it, it breaks at some point, but that was one of the coolest kill but not kill scenes with Staphne. So Bridget, as the day, jumps out, casts the younger sister, and she just stabs her right in the mouth through her head with, with Staphne. That was cool. Uh, the character Bridget as a deadite, all burned up, looked cool. And also, it was, it, was, it was a good representation of all the movies. It really was. There's a lot of stuff I know I'm forgetting. So there's a couple things I do have to remember to mention is number one the cheese grater scene everybody freaks out about the cheese grater scene i thought that was a letdown now the anticipation of the cheese grater hitting the leg and grating was the biggest part of it was the anticipation now what i mean by that is <sighs> freaking <clears throat> the cheese grater scene happens uh, bridget grabs the cheese grater puts it across her leg and just swipes like once and it just shows like some scratches. Now, I don't know if they changed it and made it a little less gory for ratings reasons, but it would have been cool to see like some like, you know, like some skin peeled up or something. I thought that would have been cooler. Still the anticipation, it's like uh, the movie X where uh, what's his nuts in the underwear steps on that nail in the barn. The anticipation was bigger than the delivery because it just showed some scratches. But that was a callback to um, Evil Dead 1 when Linda comes back out of the grave and she's scratching at Ash's leg. That's where that has a callback to. The second part that really kind of let me down, and I was really hoping for this to just finally happen, is the tattoo gun. Now, if you remember in Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 1, you remember Vivian's pointy fingernail going 
right at Dana DiLorenzo's eyeball, and it stops. Well, same thing happened with the tattoo gun. It's right at the eyeball, and I'm like, just get in the eyeball. Get in the eyeball. No, no, doesn't happen. It just kind of tattoos the side of her face because, you know, Danny interferes. I'm like, just for one time, just, it would have been cool. Speaking of going back to the eyes, if she would have had one inked up black eye and the other one would have been a dead-eyed eye, I thought that would have been cool. But the next scene after that, the mom bites out one of the other tenant's eyeballs and then spits it out and goes to the Evil Dead 2 effect of Bobby Joe or the eyeball goes in somebody's mouth and they swallow it. That <laughs> kind of, I understand why they didn't put the whoop sound in it because it's a little goofy, <laughs> but it would have been... Uh, maybe a little bit too on the nose, but both good scenes, but both kind of let me down. I'm like, if they're going to go there, you got to go there. But again, maybe ratings reasons. Maybe they're like, well, if we put this in there, maybe they're going to give us an NC-17 rating or something. And so possibility. I'm glad they put it in there. But the tattoo gun scene, I wish it would just at least got her eye a little bit and then tattooed the side of her face because that's a big deal. The tattoo turned into, you know, the whole dead eye taking her over. Uh, again, Bridget, yeah, she was, a, you know, a demon that you saw a picture in a book of this stuff coming out of this demon's mouth and all this ink and shit came out of her nose, her eyes, her mouth and shit. And it's like, fuck yeah. So, yeah, that's why she was my favorite character the whole movie. Because of the length of time she was a deadite, how she turned into a deadite. Again, the eyes, I wish they would have been the foggy ones. I wish they would have just, you know, gave Danny the other ones and gave her the white ones. But, you know, that's just nitpicking kind of shit. But still, still, both good scenes, just a little let down on it. Something else other people might have not caught was a callback to Evil Dead 1. Now, in this movie, the girl at the beginning who's possessed that you find out later lives in the same building that goes to the cabin, you know, infected as a deadite. She pukes that milky white shit, right? That Linda and Shelly did in Evil Dead 1. Uh, the mom also puked a lot in one scene, that same milky white shit that Shelly and Linda puked out in Evil Dead 1. So, cool call back to that. Glad they put that in there. I'm glad they didn't change it to like a green or a red. No, it's that milky white nasty shit. So, good job, Lee. I thought that was really, really good. And the amount of puke the mom threw, <laughs> threw out of her mouth, it was great. But a lot of Evil Dead 1, a lot of Evil Dead 2. There was 2013 in there. The scream scene when the mom is in the bathroom, she's screaming, that's very much Mia in 2013 let's talk about the abomination so the family aspect comes into play so the setting is is basically just that one floor of the building it's not the whole building i mean they can't get out the stairs are broken away and all that shit and the electricity the power's out of that side of the build or that building just only that building so there's a few other characters that are in there so they become deadites because the mom kills them and they all kind of form up into one creature with a bunch of hands and heads and shit. So it's the few people on the floor. It's like three other people, three or four other people. Um, it's the mom, it's Danny, and it is uh, Bridget. And so they're chased. They, that little bigger finally starts working. And the sister and Cassie, the youngest one, they're trying to escape, of course. But it really comes into the family aspect of it to where, you know, they form into one big conglomerate. And at one point, the the evil abomination grabs Cassie and says something like, we only need your head. It grabs a chainsaw and is like, we only need your head or something like that, which is like very much like the back to the baby doll, the Staffney thing. But I thought the wood chipper scene was cool. Like the sister comes back, saves her. Uh, abomination gets thrown into the wood chipper. Uh, chainsaw is used like basically one time. And that's just the, you know, like she just, while it's going to the wood chipper, she just like the sister just like, just right into her. And the head of the sister, or the head of the mom hasn't gone to the wood chipper yet. Very evil did too. Talks to her. I'm not going to say what she said because it was pretty funny. And so you have to watch it. And the sister just kicks it, kicks her head into the wood chipper. Let's talk about the vehicle. A lot of people didn't get this. They're like, where was the Delta? Where was the Delta? Uh, what the family drove was an old Buick station wagon. 
don't know, Buick and Oldsmobile were basically like in the same company um, under GM. So Buick, Oldsmobile, they really embellished on the emblem of Buick showing some reflection to Oldsmobile because they were like a brother-sister company at the time. So that was why they it was a Buick. So in retrospect, is this an Evil Dead film? Yes. Is it worthy of the name? Of course. It, it actually had so many nods to everything else that was done. It actually gave a little more of a spotlight on the 2013, kind of gave it its place in time. It also respected the original stuff, gave a lot of good uh, nods to the source material. It was gory, not as gory as 2013. 2013 was a lot more gory, and but at the same time, it was very gory. There was a scene where the sister is shooting, you know, the mom, her sister, and blows her arm off, blows her leg off, basically not wanting to kill her, but just kind of stop her, I think, what they were going with. Uh, and it was, it was good. If, if I had to rate it originally when I, last night when I saw it, I would, I would give, I'd give it just a solid six out of 10, but I have to change my rating scale a little bit. I would have to say this in the evil dead, the world of just evil dead, I would say now I would give it a seven out of 10. Uh, it's good. Has its place. Did it right. It didn't, it's not a carbon copy of something. It's not trying to copy something. It just takes the source material, makes a new story, gives everything else relevance, and has its own thing. Uh, and they really gave a good story of the young girl, Cassie, who did survive. Now she is going to be traumatized by this and maybe be tortured her whole life because of this, similar to Ash. So you may find her later in life, there might be a movie or something or pop up somewhere Evil Dead Wise where she's older and still this has affected her life. Never know. Which is very, very cool to think about. It leaves it open to that aspect of it. If I would have to rate just as a horror movie alone, I would say 7 out of 10 again. And for horror movies that have been released this year, I will say it's probably one of the best that has been released. So... All my concerns with this movie, out the window. It was good, and I'm not trying to lie or kiss anybody's ass or anything like that, but it was a good Evil Dead movie. Was it great? No. Was it bad? No. Was it good? Yes. It, it is something I would rewatch again. Again, the only really nitpicky discrepancies I had was the Evil Force, how it just was kind of poopy. That was, that was kind of, should have been... I don't know, just when you saw it, you're just like, eh. And if you're watching the movie and never saw any other Evil Dead and you saw that camera view, you wouldn't think anything of it. You would just think it's just the camera. So that was really my biggest gripe. And with that being said, it was a good movie. You should go watch it. I didn't want to tell too much of the story. Um, just give you a background on what I thought and what the movie was about, different nods, things like that. But you should go see it. It's good. And if I see people online selling freaking staff knees for like 300 bucks, I swear somebody needs to smack you. It's a baby doll with a scrunchie on a stick with a necklace on its head. Like one of them kid necklaces they make. Because that's ridiculous. If you find the actual baby doll head and reproduce that, I can see that. But $300 staff knees, you can make it literally in 10 minutes. So, like I said... It's a good movie. You should go see it. And that's my thoughts on it. So tell me in the comments what you thought. If you thought it was great. If you thought it was crap. But again, it has its place in the Evil Dead trilogy. Reflects and respects all the other movies. And gives each place in Evil Dead history its own spot and respects it. So until next time, you guys stay groovy.